In this video, we're going to be talking about how to find the limits and the values of the function at various points on a crazy graph like this one. And I like to call them crazy graphs because I don't know of a better name for them. But it's really just an exercise in understanding the definition of a limit and how that can be different from the value of a function. So basically, in these kinds of problems, you're given a graph like this one. It's a totally absurd graph. And it's the graph of a function. In this case, we'll call it f of x. So this is the function. And we're going to be asked to find the limit of this function at various points and also the value of the function at various points. So we'll just go through each one of these and talk about what it means to find the limit at each of these values. So the first one, we're asked to find the limit as x approaches negative 1 of the function f of x. So we need to find the limit of the function as x gets really, really close to negative 1. So when we say x gets really, really close to negative 1, what we want to do is find the point at which x is equal to negative 1. So that's just this point right here along the x-axis. This is x equals negative 1. Everything um, along this vertical line right here is x equals negative 1. So we're interested in the limit of the function as x gets really, really close to this value. Well, you can see just intuitively that we're probably going to have two options for the limit of the function as x gets close to negative 1. This hollow circle right here or this filled in circle right here. But when you're asked to find the limit of a function at any point, really what you want to do is look for the continuous part of the function. Imagine that you're tracing your finger or you're running your pencil along the graph of the function. So if you start all the way over here at the left hand side and you're just running your finger along the graph like this and you get close to the point x equals negative 1. So you're getting close to this line here, x equals negative 1. And no matter which direction you approach from, from the left hand side here or from the right hand side this way, if you trace your finger along the graph when you get close to x equals negative 1, you're right at this point right here. And if we come across along to the y axis, we can see that that's the point y equals negative 2, which means the limit of the function at that point is going to be y equals negative 2. So we just say negative 2. So again, when you're talking about the limit, it's not going to be the value of the actual function. It's just as you trace your finger along the graph, what y value are you getting close to? Let's look at another example here. The limit as x approaches, and we have this 1 plus here. Now this doesn't mean positive 1. This 1 minus here doesn't mean negative 1. When you have this little sign, like an exponent on the 1, or the sign right after the number, what it means is, as x approaches 1, from the positive side. The positive side is going to be this positive side of the graph or the right hand side of the graph. So this problem means the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive or right hand side. This problem means the limit as x approaches 1 from the negative or left hand side. So first of all, let's look at x equals 1. x equals 1 is right here along our x axis. So we think about this line right here that runs vertically. This is the line x equals 1. We're interested in the limit of the function as x gets really, really close to that line from the positive side. So the positive side means from the right-hand side. So if we're coming in here from the right-hand side and we're tracing the graph, right? We pick it up right here, and we're tracing the graph along this way here as we get really, really close to x equals 1. As we trace along from the right-hand side, we're getting close to this value right here, which is the value y equals 3 if we come over to the y-axis. So the limit as x gets close to 1 from the positive side is 3. What about the limit as x gets close to 1 from the negative side? Well, we're starting from the left-hand side here. We're tracing the graph, and we're trying to get really, really close to x equals 1. Well, as we get close to x equals 1 and we come from this direction, we're approaching this value right here, which if we come over to the y-axis is the value y equals 2. So the limit there, then, is 2. Now what about the limit as x gets close to 2 of the function f of x? Well, if we find the point x equals 2, that's right here along the x-axis, which means this vertical line here that passes through this point is x equals 2. Well, the graph there is just at this point right here. There's nothing interesting or different happening at this point. The reason they throw this in here is just to remind you that if the function is normal, it's continuous in this area, there's nothing happening, then the limit of the function is just going to be the y value at that point. And the y value here is y equals 2, so the limit of the function is 2. Now what about these next two here? We have the limit as x approaches 3 from the positive side and the limit as x approaches 3 from the negative side. That's similar to what we just did with the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive and negative side. So again, we find the point x equals 3. That's this point right here. So we're looking at this vertical line here that passes through x equals 3. 
Well, as we approach that vertical line from the positive side, that's x approaches 3 from the positive side. So we're coming over here from the positive right-hand side, approaching that line x equals 3. Well, we get close to this value right here. Even though it's a hollow circle, it doesn't matter. What's the y value at this point? Well, it's y equals 1. So the limit then is 1. As we approach the line x equals 3 from the negative side, so we're coming from the left-hand side or the negative side, we pick up the graph right here, and as we get close to the line x equals 3, we're getting close to this hollow circle right here, and the value of the graph there, if we come over to the y-axis, is this y equals 2, so the limit is going to be 2. So we've talked about the limit of the function at various points. What about the actual value of the function at various points? So what about the value of the function at x equals negative 1, right? f of negative 1 means what's the value of the function at x equals negative 1? Well, if we come over here to x equals negative 1, it's this value right here. We come down to where the graph is. We have two choices. We have this hollow circle here at y equals negative 2, and we have this darkened circle here at about y equals negative 2 and a half. Well, the value of the function is always going to be where the darkened circle is, or the solid circle, not the hollow circle. There's a discontinuity in the function here, but the limit is still negative 2. The value of the function, however, is always the shaded or darkened circle. So the value of the function at x equals negative 1 is going to be negative 2 and a half because the value there is about y equals negative 2 and a half. So we'll say negative 2.5. What about the value of the function at f equals 1? Well, we just come over here to x equals 1, that's this point right here, and now we're looking for the value of the function there. Well, we've got this hollow circle here at y equals 2, and a solid circle here at y equals 3. The value of the function is always at the solid circle, so that means that the value of the function here is 3. And then lastly here, if we look at f of 3, we're going to come over to x equals 3, which is this point right here. Even though we said that the limit as x approaches 3 from the negative or left-hand side is 2, and that the limit of the function as x approaches 3 from the positive or right-hand side is 1, so we have a limit of 1 from the right, a limit of 2 from the left, the value of the function is neither of those points. It's neither the left-hand limit or the right-hand limit. It's this shaded circle at about y equals 1.5, so the value of the function there is actually going to be 1.5. So even though graphs like this are a little crazy and a little weird, they do illustrate the definition of the limit and how to find the value of the function at various points despite the value of the limit at those same points. So that's how you use crazy graphs to find the value of the limit and the value of the function.